Aloha, I'm Billy B from Hawaii105KINE, and I think you'll be amazed what Honolulu Magazine has put together for you because here you've got the best music and the best albums of the new century. Take a look and take a listen. Sweet and Lovely came about uh, in 2004. Uh, we started recording, and it was a project um, with the support of my mom and dad. And uh, I had already ended a contract with my first CD. Um, and Sweet and Lovely was the introduction of Raya Teham Records and also a promise to everyone that, you know, okay, I'm in it all the way and I wanted to pursue um, Hawaiian music at that point. She hits those notes so precisely. You just sit there and you just go, oh. It's one of those CDs that you want to put on during parties and just let it play. You know, the first time I heard Raya sing, we were all in Japan together, and she was like about minus 12 years old. And she got up and sang, and I thought to myself then, I would love to hear her sing with Auntie Genoa. So when I heard her doing Hu'iei with Auntie Genoa, I was like, it brought me down in such a happy way. I felt Hawaii smile, the whole of it, every dimension you can think of, and into the universe. I loved it. Lena Machado, back in like the 20s and 30s and 40s, was, was singing this style. And then you have an, art, uh, an artist like uh, Raiatea, who's, who's taking that tradition and, and making it relevant for, for Hawaiian music now. Leo Kie Kie is pretty much a term for a female that sings in a high register because um, actually falsetto, the definition of falsetto is a man singing in a female register, in a high register. And Leo, which is voice, Kie Kie is high, which simply means high voice. <laughs> One thing about Raiate Helm and the music that she shares with everyone through her releases is that this is music that I think is catching on with the younger ones and they'll be inspired to also continue that art of, of ha'i, of falsetto singing, of singing traditional Hawaiian music. The title of this album, uh, Destiny, came from a song that Roland wrote and it just seemed to fit the time that we were, this time that we were in. And uh, it was easy to make, and yet it had its challenges. I guess that's what Destiny's all about. Rob and Roland are both really, really focused on the true melodies of a song, the thread, the root of the song. And it's back to traditional things. It's back to the Hawaiian language for both of them. They've developed so much as musicians you know, through 40 years of playing together. Um, more nuanced, you know, they're, they're pulling out these songs and, and so, you know, some, some songs they perform more than once and you, you can compare the two and you can just see the, the growth and the development. And I think they're going to continue to do that as long as they're around and playing. They're consummate um, entertainers and studio guys. They just are brilliant. I would like to believe that, um, that there are more young people out there learning from albums 20, 30 years ago, as I still do, and using it as a reference. I'd like them to use me as a reference, to tell you the truth, because, or Roland, uh, only because we have um, so much in us. And you know, we're from a time where the kupuna would share, eventually, songs, stories uh, with us to make those songs more real, rather than it be almost mythological in its uh, in its creation and its continuous. So uh, I like to think that by having Destiny on this group of uh, CDs for right now, that uh, it's a uh, nod and it's an acknowledgement towards uh, what wasn't but continues to be today. Israel Komoka Vivoli had a way of drawing people in. 
he would talk to you. You'd sit there mesmerized and listen. He had a way of speaking from his heart, and that also came through his music. If you listen to Over the Rainbow, if you listen to his CDs, sometimes after the CDs, he's just talking story with you. It's a, a soothing sound. It's a soothing voice. It's uh, in a soothing key. He's not straining. And um, uh, that, I think, is, is the, the magic of Israel. When we started asking people what, what their favorite albums of the, of the new century were, we were, we were pretty uh, relaxed about what we were asking people. We said, okay, it has to be by a local artist, and it, and it had to be an album that came out in 2000 or later. Um, and it was, it was surprising to me that, that Iz just kept popping up, you know, you, you know even, even though he passed away in 1997, it's, it's obvious that his music was still relevant to people, you know, uh, and they, they still consider it to be relevant even in this new century. There's still people that discover him every day, and so the relevance it's a hard question to ask, but he's still very relevant, you know, and um, he is, you, you ask anybody about, you travel around the world and you ask any, anybody, you, they ask you where you're from, you say Hawaii, they say, oh, Israel is, Brada is. What song is my favorite from Israel, Kamako Vibole? Uh, that's asking me, like, can you pick one granule of sand from this beach, please? You don't know which one. Uh, there are so many songs. Over the Rainbow was such a huge hit. Hene Hene Ko'aka for me, the live version was so fun and upbeat. Um, and it showed that happy sense of him. Huta Margarita is another one. Israel did feel some of the success. He did feel a couple of the movie deals before he passed. He did feel this. Often I'm asked, did Israel, did he, I hope he knows that he's this successful. Okay, and I said, no, he does. I mean, he, he felt it. With each one of Kelly E. Reichel's releases, uh, there's always something unexpected. There's always something beautiful. There is a mixture of different sides of his music that he brings all together. Usually, Kelly E.'s albums would be, they come together, it's usually one song in particular that kind of starts the album. And um, that song was uh, Kanahona Pilikai. Aloha e, aloha no. Number one on our list by a wide margin, it, it, he was just on everybody's ballot, uh, Kelly Rachel's Kelo uh, uh, Kamaile. Uh, this, was, this was an album that he recorded uh, maybe a year or two after his grandmother passed. Uh, he he uh, grew up in Maui um, and his, his grandmother uh, lived her almost her whole life in Paia and so he would, he would uh, kind of spend weekends there and, and she kind of partially raised him and it was a huge influence on him. And so of course when, when she passed, you know, the, here was this, uh, this family centerpiece, like she was, she was the center of that family and so it was a, it was a huge loss to, that, that, uh, that happened. It was emotional and even though the recording of that isn't as perfect as other studio techniques, uh, the feeling and the emotion is really what you want. That's what people connect with and there's a lot of that in the album in many different ways. In the 1990s, Kelly E. Reichel, by far one of the top artists, um, and it shows not only in record sales, uh, in concert performances. I mean, he performed and opened for Celine Dion and a whole bunch of other nationally known acts, and is well known by these national acts. Um, it affirms that uh, Kelly E. Reichel has opened doors and extended those boundaries of what is considered Hawaiian music. I remember Kawai Punahele when I was in the fifth grade <laughs> on Molokai. And uh, that song, you know, these songs still feel the same and um, it makes you appreciate, you know, all the hard work that they put in and the path that they created for, for us fellow musicians and artists. Okay,